Hi, and welcome to this quick video on how to answer PMP questions correctly. So when someone is trying to give PMP a shot and become a PMP certified project manager, he would have certain general questions. Questions like what are PMP eligibility requirements? What are contact hours? Since eligibility requirements include certain amount of contact hours. How to fill up the PMP application? And let me tell you, it's a big one. How should I prepare? Which is the best book? Since there are a lot of books available out there. What is the passing score? <laughs> now, there are a lot of myths related to the passing score of the PMP exam. Which mock tests to take? And there are a lot of mock tests available out there. But since there are a lot of myths related to the passing score of the PMP exam, the other general question people usually have is how much should they be scoring in these mock tests to make sure that they will clear their PMP. But again, these are general questions and this blog and this video is not about these general questions because the answers to these are available everywhere, not here. So you can consult anyone who's already a PMP certified to get answers to these questions or you can always Google them out. This blog is about hitting the nail on the head and we are actually talking about the top five tips to answer PMP exam questions correctly. That's all, nothing more, nothing less. The top five tips that will help you answer PMP exam questions correctly. As always, you can check out our blog pmplounge.com.blogspot.com and I have a blog up which will talk about these five tips in much more detail. So the link to that will be in the description to check it out. All right, so let's get started. First tip is to select an option which will always be correct under all situations. So there could be certain situations where you may think about selecting an option, but then PMP does not test about your personal preferences. PMP tests universal values. Let's take an example to understand this. You are getting late to a very important meeting that would decide the fate of a $2 million contract. If you turn up late, there is a 95% chance that the contract will be awarded to your competitor as the customer is very specific about time. You are approaching a red signal, a red traffic signal that is. What is the worst thing you can do? Call the customer to apologize as you're running late. Take a thorough look around and make a calculated decision to break the signal to reach on time. Call your boss to cover for you for the first few minutes. Do nothing, show up late. So the question is asking about the worst thing to do. In this situation, the worst thing to do, you may think it would be to do nothing and show up late. But the answer to this question is option number two which talks about breaking the signal. Breaking a red traffic signal is against the law and PMP in no situation will allow a PMP certified professional to break a rule, a law of the land. So the worst option in this scenario is option number two. So like I said, the tip here is to select an option which will always be correct under no situation under no circumstances this pmp endorse that a certified professional breaks a law of the land let's move on tip number two is about true statements now in certain questions that you'll get in the pmp exam you may see that there are options that have true statements so the options are basically true statements, but they do not pertain to the question. Let's take an example. As the project manager of a project in a projectized environment, what could be your biggest concern during the project closure phase? Change must always be documented no matter how small. Sponsor signs off the project charter to authorize the project manager. Residual risks are the risks that remain after a risk response plan has been implemented. Resources might get busy looking for other opportunities as they will have no home after project completion. So if you're aware of projectized environment, option number four is obviously correct. But the point here is to understand that all four options are true statements. 
The first three just do not pertain to this question, but they are true statements. So there will be situations, there will be scenarios in your exam when you will get true statements as options, but they will not pertain to the situation. Let's move on. Tip number three, what's in a name? <laughs> so there, there are several names for a certain tool and technique or a certain project management concept or certain input or output. And it is always a good practice to know all the names. Let's take an example. Uh, the question here, which quality tool is used to measure if the process is within customer specified limits? Fishbone diagram, cause and effect analysis, control chart, Ishikawa diagram. Of course, the answer is control chart, but do you realize that the other three options are one and the same thing? Fishbone diagram, cause and effect analysis, Ishikawa, they are all the same tool of quality. Let's go ahead to tip number four. Go big or go home. Now, here's the thing. As a project manager, you may be working on all sorts of projects. There could be huge projects. There could be very small projects, but when you're answering questions in PMP, you need to be thinking in terms of large projects. Let's take an example question. During the project execution, a testing resource comes to you and mentions how he has an issue with three other people in the development team. He's worried that they team up against him. What is the worst thing to do in this situation? Make sure you address this in the next weekly team meeting. Ask the testing resource to sort this out with the help of his manager. Complain to the manager of the development team. Do nothing unless you have more details about this issue. Of course, all four options are really bad here. We are asked to select the worst. Option number one is the worst thing to do in this situation. As I mentioned earlier, you need to think in terms of huge projects, projects that are worth millions of dollars that may last up to one year, that may have 200 to 300 resources. Now, in a weekly team meeting, when you have 250 team members on the call, on a conference call, do you think it makes sense to bring up a petty issue which involves four resources? Of course not. So when answering questions, you need to think in terms of large projects. All right, moving on. God may not be in the details. <laughs> now, what this basically means is certain times the questions will be very wordy and those wordy questions the 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 a lot of details in those wordy questions will actually be in the last statement itself so let, let's take an example and understand how wordy questions are designed to basically confuse you you're the project manager on a multinational software development project for a world known bank your brother works at the business partner which provides external consultants for the same project you have just completed negotiations and signed a multi-year contract with the business partner company. The consultants work on three different continents and time zones, and thus communication is sometimes an issue. Which of the following best improves team cohesion and ensures easy team coordination? Well-managed conference calls, formal written communication, war rooms, or milestone parties? Now, of course, the answer is war rooms, but do you realize how Everything except for the last sentence in the question is, is just a red herring. It's there to confuse you. It, it, it does not pertain to the question at all. It's just extra information. So my suggestion would be to read the last line first. It is, it is, it is not always possible and it is not always necessary that a wordy question, a big question has a lot of red herring in, 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 in all cases. And there's the, and the question is actually in the last line. It may not be always true, but most of the times it will be true. And it is always a good practice to read the last line first. It will give you much better idea of what the question is asking about. So those were our five tips. I thank you a lot 
for watching this video and do like share subscribe and comment on this and as always you can check out the blog pmplounge.blogspot.com for more pmp resources thank you and have a nice day